I grew up in the beautiful Rocky Mountains of Northwest Montana. And in this video, we travel home. And as with any overlanding trip, it's really all about the journey rather than the destination. And boy, did this journey not fail us to provide adventures and surprises all along the way. So join us in this wonderful trip home. I'm Don. And this is Rachel. And this is Living on the Apex. It's an absolute beautiful morning. Got up this morning to the sound of an owl, chipmunks, birds, and the stream that's running beside us. Decided to do a little walk. It's just nice to get out sometimes where it's peaceful and quiet. But anyway, we're gonna pack up and head down the road. Next stop is gonna be Skull Canyon. Kind of curious what that's all about. Saw it on the map. Canyon. We saw it on the map a while ago and we just want to check it out. It looks really cool and there's some history behind it that's kind of creepy but we're going to find a really neat spot and stop and get our lunch together and just enjoy the location. So we'll see you in the canyon. I don't know if we're crazy or not but we were just driving down the highway here and saw a road going up the mountain into a cave and according to the map the road continues on through another cave so it may be too steep we might not be able to do it but we're gonna either way we're gonna get up there even if we have to hike <music> a little bit of a climb in 0.33 miles and one third of a mile we climbed probably over 500 feet straight up and I'm glad I didn't bring the Jeep up here because there would be no place to turn around it's too much of an angle and I would roll plus the gravel coming up I don't think my even though I got good tires it's a 20 25 percent incline and just gravel so sometimes you just have to park it and hike which is my favorite, my wife's favorite thing to do. Even though it was a tough hike, it was, we got an incredible view. Just an indication of how difficult the hike was. We found the arch. <laughs> we didn't even know there was one. You can see where we got off the main highway and zigzagged through the desert, came right up to here.
found a cool little spot to pull off and make ourselves some lunch here in Skull Canyon. I think I called it Skull Crack Canyon, but it's just Skull Canyon. Rachel's pretty tired. Lady Bell did not let us sleep last night. She kept freaking out, looking into the dark shadows of the forest and whining and acting strange. But anyway, we're gonna get, we're gonna make a couple sandwiches, some pitas, and uh, yeah, we'll tell you the story, a quick story of why this is called Skull Canyon. Okay, Skull Canyon. Skull Canyon's named because some old settlers found human skulls inside of a cave. That's why it's called Skull Canyon. It's a cool little detour, got really narrow, it's very beautiful and very unique. And we just found a shady spot. And, all right, we'll see you down the road. decided to stop at the Lost Pine Hot Springs. At least I think that's what it's called. We'll put a little note up here if it isn't called that, but we were going to camp here, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to work out. We're going to go down the road a little bit further, but the hot springs feels good even though it's 100 degrees outside. <sighs> Uh, we just left the Lost Trail Hot Springs. We decided not to stay there. We enjoyed the hot springs, but down the road and we found this beautiful spot. We got a big area to ourselves, beautiful river. My wife is setting up a real nice hammock that she used on the Appalachian Trail. She has a really bad back, so sleeping in the rooftop tent with only about two inches of padding that's really hard doesn't go well with her back. Uh, but anyway, she's setting up a nice, nice hammock, and we're about ready to eat dinner. We had a great evening last night, slept well. We're gonna go ahead and head on up to Missoula and then all the way up to our, to our hometown. And we'll see if there's any surprises between here and there. That's what I love traveling with my wife. She kind of instilled it in me because it came from her family that whenever they saw something, they went and checked it out. And the cool thing is with overlanding and having the right vehicle and so forth, you could, you could do that even if it's way out in the desert on top of a mountain or whatever else. So we'll just see what happens. Yesterday we had a great time. We saw what looked like a road going into a cave, as I shared with you already. And uh, that was just crazy and it was fun. So anyway, we'll see you down the road. <music> Thank you.
Okay, you see this fallen rock sign? That's a complete understatement. Because when I was a kid, my dad pointed this rock out that had come off the mountain. And it's not a mere rock. It's about the size of a semi-truck. And it came down and created this massive trench, destroyed the railroad tracks, and it came off the top of that mountain. And it's always kind of freaked me out every time I drive by it. We made it to Northwest Montana. It's been an incredible trip just coming here. And as you saw, we had some amazing surprises, which, which you gotta love about overlanding. You could just be spontaneous. And we had a great time getting here. Now that we're here, we've been here a few days, but coming up here, we had to go through forest fires and the air quality was horrible. You couldn't even see the mountains. As a matter of fact, I ended up having to help put out a forest fire that had started just off the side of the road. We had somebody wave us down and I happened to have a Pulaski, which is a firefighter's tool on the back of the Jeep and a shovel and five gallons of water, which we carry being self-reliant as overlanders. We had everything and we were able to help put out that fire, which was kind of fascinating. My brother's a firefighter and been doing it for 20 some years. And so it's kind of interesting. I got to be a firefighter for a few minutes. Thankful we were able to put it out because it could have wiped out an entire town. But since we've been here, we've been able to go visit our old elementary school where I grew up, about as close to a one room schoolhouse as you can get, as several of the teachers had to take three classes each first, second, and third grade, fourth, fifth, sixth, and that's why I went to elementary, played basketball. And then we went to, to our high school today and got to visit a, an old school teacher we knew. He's been teaching 47 years. He coached me in track, he coached me in cross country, he coached me in basketball. This guy's been so faithful teaching and coaching for so many years, it was unique and great to be able to see him. And then we went to a location that we buried a time capsule in 1985 with my seventh grade teacher, she had us bury a time capsule where we drew pictures and wrote a story about what our hometown was gonna be like 50 years from now. And that was in 1985. And so in 2035, I need to come back with a metal detector because we buried it in a coffee can and we gotta dig that up. And if it's even still there, it could be all rusted and gone. But that I, I look forward to that. I hope in 12 years, it's still there. But we hope you enjoy the videos and what we've shared with you in, in our hometown. This is part one of the video. And in part one here, you're gonna see us hike to a beautiful waterfall uh, that I didn't even know was here. It's funny when you grow up in an area, you take things for granted. But there's a beautiful waterfall we go check out, an old mine shaft where we, we walk back several hundred yards into. And we just enjoy our time here. And the air is finally clearing up because we got a big rainstorm yesterday. So anyway, we hope you enjoy the rest of the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, share the video. We appreciate it, it helps us a lot. And if you like the content, I hope that you just join in the community and we appreciate you. So we'll see you down the road. We're going into a mine. Is this really an old mine? Reverse. Wow, this is trippy. Dude, what's the name of this mine? Just right on the side of the road without even being blocked off. That's crazy. Have you? How far back does this go? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Two hundred yards. It's split. There's a smiling face. Okay, this is once again another surprise we weren't expecting. What you gotta love about these kind of trips. America. 
You weren't supposed to stay on it longer than one second. What's Bell doing? Morning, children, you will get wet. Okay, you see we made it to Char Waterfall, beautiful waterfall, easy hike here in Idaho, just across the border, and uh, yeah, pretty gorgeous. Water's absolutely freezing. Here it is in August and feels like ice water, but that's the mountains. Mountain streams for you. Say hi! Hi! hi. <laughs> beautiful Clark Fork River and it's the perfect location to end this video on and I wanted to share with you a few things I've often said that when it comes to overlanding the journey is the best part and, and it is it is amazing the surprises we've had the exploration and so forth but really on this trip it was the destination and that was because of the family that we came up here for we came up for a couple reasons we came up here for a uh, celebration of life, a memorial service for a dear relative of mine that, that lived about a mile away the whole time I grew up here and was like a second mother to me. And her daughter and I were like brother and sister. Sis Ballinger, um, I'm dedicating this video to her and her love for life, her love for her family, and her love for this country. And then and then I want to talk about my father-in-law, who I love dearly. We, we came up here to celebrate his birthday and my my wife's niece as well her birthday and 
So we're thankful for family. We're thankful for the blessings God has given us. And I think sometimes we need to step back and realize how quickly life flies by. The Bible says life is but a vapor. In the book of James, it says it's a vapor. It's here and it's gone. And, and when I think about it, here I was running around here 30-some years ago uh, as a teenager, and now it's like, whew, it, you know, years catch up to you. And so I encourage you, if you're watching this, uh, to really consider your life. But most importantly, consider eternal life and what Jesus Christ can do for you. And so I encourage you to comment below in this video if you have questions or comments. You want to debate about it? That's cool with me. I'd love to. Uh, uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to be looking for part two of this video as we travel back home to Utah. We've got a couple awesome locations and we saw something really amazing today. And I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of it at the end of this video. You'll see that in part two. So thank you so much for watching.